Hey everybody, Jen Hatmaker here. I am your host of the For the Love podcast and I have two special men with me today and you're one of them. I am. Hi. I'm special. Thanks for saying that. Um, you are special. Tyler is with me today. Um, we are on a little trip and this incredible, super, super, super fun interview was scheduled. And I'm like, this is your genre in more than one way. Like pop in with me. So thank you for sitting in with me on this interview, um, which you guys are going to love. You're going to love this whole hour. I was thinking, let's try to, let's get 30 minutes and then we just take a whole hour. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. I know. You guys, this is a fun series. It's called For the Love of Funny. You know me. You, I love comedy. I, I worship it. These are my muses. These are my mentors. Um, and so... I've always, I kind of grew up in a funny family. So we've always loved collectively funny movies and funny shows and funny people. And we all think we're funny. Like everybody, me and all my siblings think we're funny. My dad is legitimately funny. Legitimately funny. Yeah. And so this is just an area that I love. So I don't know if you were here around the show, but we did a series on laughter just a few years back. We had some incredible comics. Um, we had Kevin Nealon on SNL, like royalty. We had Angela Johnson, um, who is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite female comics. She just had a baby, by the way. So it's been a minute since we've like had a series on funny and funny people. So guess who we are kicking this series off with? You're going to be so excited. I know I was because on the show today is Nate Bargetsy. My dude, my dude. <laughs> Um, so I don't want to call Nate a rising star because that would, he's 20 years in to the comedy world. Um, so he's kind of had this steady rise, but man, he is, I don't, I don't even want to say peaking right now, but he is, his, his star is high in the sky. Um, he's been doing comedy for so long, like the hard scrabble way, like comedy clubs and like tours that are routed weird and just the whole circuit. And he's just built and built. He's built credibility. He has built up his content material. He has built up his audience and his fan base. Um, and now he's just, he, it's just like, he's everywhere. I can't go anywhere without seeing something about Nate. His first Netflix special came out in 2019. Um, and it just exploded in popularity. And so he filmed another special that came out in 2021 and then a brand new special that just came out on Amazon prime, which we have watched. I've seen it four times. It is. That's great. It's so funny. He's so funny. Um, Atlantic called Nate the nicest man in standup. Um, he's kind of probably known for his clean comedy. Um, that's, that was sort of his brand from the jump and he stuck with it all this time. Um, and he developed pretty early. It's kind of fun to hear him talk like strangely and funny enough. His dad was a magician, <laughs> a Christian magician. So he like, he kind of grew up in showmanship yeah. and like performance and, and you, you kind of see some of this imprint on his work now. Um, and so we're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about his upbringing. We're going to talk about his parents and his family, um, how he sort of got his start in comedy, who he learned from and emulated, what it's like now that, I mean, I don't want to oversell it, but like, if you're talking about comics in the spotlight right now, you're, we're talking about Nate, wouldn't yeah, you say? Yeah, for sure. We're also going to talk about how he feels so blessed to be my best friend. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I think that matters to him. He would want me to say okay. this yes. in the intro. I think you're okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> he's he's great, you guys. Outside of comedy, he's like a huge golfer. He loves sports. God, we didn't even talk about sports. We didn't. We didn't have time. We, we didn't. About everything. No, we we ha we kept him on the hook for a whole hour. Um, he hosts a podcast called Nate Land. One every week, and he's been everywhere. He's been on the Tonight Show with Fallon like over ten times. He's performed for the troops overseas, festivals, um, and he's currently on the the Be Funny tour. And I'm just telling you, look it up. If he is anywhere near you, 
you got to go. And you can thank me later. He's funny. He's smart. He's humble. He's, it's Nate, you guys. So welcome Nate Bargetzi to the show. Okay, Nate, welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hi. That's it. I've got two good men here with me today, which is unusual. It is. Um, so Tyler is joining me today uh, to interview you, and we're pumped, man. I'm such a fan. Thank you. I'm such- excited to do it, yeah. Um, I watched your show, your latest special, for the third time. In this exact room, and not on this exact couch with my best friends about four days ago, two of us had seen it and two of us hadn't. And the two that hadn't were so out of control that we were like, y'all need to pull it together. <laughs> so either you stop laughing so hard or you're going to have to leave and we're going to finish it again. Yeah. Um, and so I want, you, I want you to know that we are big Nate fans over in this half the world. I love that. That's, I mean, that's the, the best thing to hear is, Man. and then I, yeah, I love it all. And I love that y'all get up to them for laughing that hard. I like that you threatened to be like, y'all are about to have to beat it. I love, I love your work for a million reasons, but we have a lot in common. And yep. so I grew up super Christian, so, like Southern Baptist. I, I think that's yeah. all the way on the, the, the right twig of the right limb of the right branch of the tree. Yeah. Um, and so when you talk about your like life growing up, I'm there, I'm there in my own memory. Um, and so I'd like to start there. Can you tell us a little bit about your family growing up? And I, I'm really interested to hear you talk about your sort sort of comedy orange origin story. Like, were you just always funny or who did you love? That was funny. Who were you watching? Who were you listening to? Were you allowed to watch comedians because I grew up on SNL. So that was my masterclass in terms yeah. of comedy. And I still like worship SNL and all the like cast after cast. And um, so, okay. I have three, like 10 questions that you just pick, you pick where you want to go there. Uh, yeah. I grew up uh, same way Southern Baptist in that, you know, Nashville and uh, my parents were Catholic uh, and then they moved to Nashville so uh, they were, and then they didn't become Baptist because my who they who they moved with uh, was Baptist. That was all the churches down here, really. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, we grew up uh, grew up like that. Uh, my dad's a magician, obviously. Uh, I've talked about it before. He would do shows uh, at churches or just around, and sometimes I would help do the shows. And uh, it was. You know, I mean, I don't think it was like anything. I, I don't think I ever like was like, oh, I'm about like I'm doing this to become. I want to be, you know, a magician or a comedian or was something. It was just like I liked doing it. Uh, you know, as I was able to get people to laugh and stuff, uh, high school and all that. And I think around high school is when I started like even a little bit more like thinking like, man, I'd like to do like stand up or you know, and tell my friends I'd like to do it. And they would, you know, er- I mean, everybody's pretty much supportive. Were uh, they? Yeah. I, I have a theory. I don't think anybody really becomes unsupportive of something. Uh, I mean, in my circumstances, I now I wasn't, I couldn't get in a college or like there was nothing. I had no other, you know, I wasn't like, I was like a doctor and then they're like, what are you doing? And like I had, you know, it was like, Whatever I was going to go do, it was like, it will be there the second you come back, uh, whatever job you wanted. So I think people don't like tend to like not when you say you want to do something, they're fine with you, like going to start to do it. It's uh, it's actually the people that tell you not to move on are the people that are in your field and they do that later. Cause then they don't like, that's where you get most of your, I don't know if you can do that. Like you can't, it's, it's going to be people around you cause they don't want you to pass them or try something that's outside of their thing. Uh, and so when my dad being a magician too, they were super, obviously my parents are super supportive and, and uh, they were happy. And then I, uh, so I, when I decided I moved to Chicago first and then uh, went and did second city for like two years and then, and when I was in Chicago, I mean, that's just 2000, I moved in 02. 
to 2003. And uh, it was like Hannibal Burris was there, uh, Starden, uh, uh, TJ Miller, Kumel Nagiani, uh, uh, Pete Holmes. Like it was just a bunch of people in Chicago and we were all doing like open mics which is always crazy. It's crazy. To, like, that's the funnest part to see when you start, you know, and then you see where someone's at. Like, I mean, Kumail's a superstar. He's in, like, superhero movies. Uh, but it's like we were doing open mics 20 years ago. Like, it's, it's yeah, it's always very, I, I, that, I remember even being young, being like, I can't wait to see what everybody's doing in 10 years. Like, because you're just like, it's kind of like high school, you know, you kind of, Start, and then you're just like, well, where are we all going to be? You know, right? And you're these like grimy dungeon little comedy like spaces, and probably bombing some. Yeah, like, I mean, that's no, a yeah. learning curve. No one's you're seeing people make it. Like I saw like Amy Schumer. That, there's a positive out of Chicago. I went to New York. Is you get to see people actually make it, and I, that's a very important thing to see when you're young. You need to see someone that was next to you doing an open mic then become big. And so you're like, all right, well, I'm watching this happen. So if I, you, you, in theory, you just think if I keep working. Uh, so, but yeah, you would sit there and, you know, where I was with Amy Schumer or uh, uh, Aziz and sorry, Aziz and sorry was doing oh, like open mics with us. I didn't really know. I don't really know him super well, but like he was in the scene when I was doing it. And uh, he was doing open mics, and then it was like next thing you know, he like had a show on MTV, and then he was hosting the MTV uh, Music Awards or whatever Movie Awards, and you're like, like wow, it's awesome, man. He, let's deal with this fact: anybody who's in Nashville who has ever done comedy ever has a Nate story right mm -hmm. now. What do you okay. mean? Give me an example. So I'll, I'll tell you. So there's a room, a spot that I used to do stand up in called the East Room. And we we know a lot of the same people, Dusty Slay, <clears throat> a handful of people. And if talking about watching people go off and do things, mm -hmm. every like when I started doing comedy in Nashville, it was like 2017, 2016. And people were watching Nate, they were watching you start to really move and like really make moves. And everybody here wanted to be associated. Well, yeah, everybody wanted to be associated with Nate. Like every, yeah. in, in Nashville that period of time, you were already a deal to yeah. everybody here. At that point, Nate was, had like, had done good. So as you continue to blow up and get bigger and bigger and bigger, everybody's stories get bigger. Oh, and bigger. sure. Oh, 100%. They're like, Nate's my first cousin. Uh, it, uh -huh. it, so me, this is an honest to God story with me. I think I started following you, like, on Facebook, like, in probably oh. 2018. We became friends on Facebook. 2018 or 2008? 20, no, 2018. Okay. So okay. not too long. Ago. Okay, yeah. We became friends on Facebook. Sure. And because we have so many mutual friends, comedy, I was like, as soon as we came friends on Facebook, I told everybody, I was like, yeah, that's my dog, me. <laughs> totally. I'm God, like, that's, that's my the worst. Right there. And then you scored like a college commercial, I think. Remember that yeah. commercial? Like, like, TV? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for direct TV. It is insane mm. watching you blow up. You you get to watch people like Aziz. You get to watch um, all hey, of your Schumer, people. Yeah. But bro, we get to watch you from Nashville yeah. and it's insane. Yeah. When you played Bridgestone and packed it out more than anybody. That's very sweet. And that's very nice to hear all that. And it is, and we do go back. I mean, that's why when we met, we can immediately, you, you, you jump 10 years in a relationship just cause you're like, we've been doing the same thing the whole time we haven't talked yet. Uh, but that, yeah, that means, uh, that, that's very, very nice to hear. And, uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I love Nashville. I love the East Room. I love the, uh, the scene here has gotten so much better and uh, all that stuff. And, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's cool. It's, I, don't, I don't even know what to say, but it's cool to hear because it's, you know, you hope. You know, you never know. Like, I still, you still, like, feel like if I went down to the East Room, you're just, everybody be annoyed that I come down and try to do it. You know, it's always like, I'm sorry, I just need to <laughs> go up real I like quick. it here. But there's something about Nashville, everybody sharing this experience, because we feel like 
Nashville is a city known for comedy. As actors, Nashville is a city known for actors. I remember the first show I ever done at ABC was a show called Kevin Probably Saves the World. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the same night, Dusty Slay was on Jimmy Kimmel. So we were both on ABC on the same day. Mm -hmm. And even though it was on a TV show and it was on Jimmy Kimmel, there was something about feeling like Nashville folks were doing something sure, something special. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, though. That is. Like, when you see, I mean, you got uh, James Austin Johnson, like, in SNL. In and SNL! Then, uh, the, the, I, 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 she's younger. The, yeah, she's right for SNL, I think. Uh, she was in Nashville, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but it's like, yeah, I, I, I love all that stuff. That is crazy. I would have that, that's insane to be like, y'all both on ABC, two Nashville connect. I mean, and because all it does is, is it's showing it's a great thing because it's showing people that they can move here mm -hmm. and still get yeah. this the recognition that you know outside of Nashville, and that's what you know. I want that goal to be like eventually, like people can just come here, move here instead of moving to New York or LA or something. And then they can, they know that they can be seen mm -hmm. and we have a chance here. Yeah. For sure. Summertime and even the start of the school year, you guys can mean a season of spending, right? Like vacays and staycays, splurges, parties, celebrations. And then of course, all the back to school stuff. But are you spending the right way or the responsible way? I know it's boring, but important. So, maybe check out Chime. They have an online checking account, tons of benefits, millions of members love them. Like fee-free overdraft up to $200 plus, you guys. You can get paid up to two days early with direct deposit and manage your money on the go, like all the time, 24-7. With Chime, you also have access to more than 60,000 fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. You can also pay family and friends super easily through Chime, no matter what bank account they use. And you can cash out your money fee-free. It all basically means more time and money for whatever floats your boat. And of course, with Chime, there are no monthly fees, no minimum balance, no deposit required to become a member. So sign up for Chime today and keep making this summer the best one yet for yourself and certainly for your wallet. Get started at chime.com slash for the love. You guys, that's chime.com slash for the love. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debt card provided by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Access to direct deposits up to two days early depends on the timing of the submission of the payment file from the payer. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. I have just the thing for you, Jen Hatmaker Book Club. We are going on our fourth year of clubbing, and it is just one of my favorite things. We read the best books every month, thought-provoking, entertaining, fun, important, meaningful. I always love it when our members say they would never have discovered or read a book were it not for book club. But the real party is in our private Facebook community. People have made lifelong friends there finding connections with other women, literally right in their neighborhood, and getting together with all of our local chapters. So when you're a member, you get so much fun stuff every month too. Of course, you get the book box with the book and a special gift and a love note from me, but you also get a whole bunch of digital resources like discussion guides, custom content, music playlists from our authors. That's one of our favorite things. I also host video podcasts with our authors from each month, as well as Facebook live chats where you have a chance to get on Zoom with me for our month book talk. And you get special access to events, meetups. It's so fun. We are your people. Come join us. Use the code READ, R-E-A-D, for $5 off your first month at jenhatmakerbookclub.com. I'm, I'm interested in your process because you've talked about it being pretty important to you to make your parents laugh and also make them proud so they're not going to like be here for all the like the swearing and the filth. Um, and so I've got a couple of questions around that. First of all, did you have like who who were you who are you who were you emulating, especially like early on in your career? Who were you watching going, 
I like that rhythm. I like that timing. I like that content. I like that delivery. Um, I could, I can see early in my career, a different genre entirely, but who I was emulating, I can tell by looking at my early work. I'm like, Oh, I was doing a thing. Um, yeah. but, and then I'd love to, so let's start there and then I'll go to my second question. My timing, like with my dad, like is going to be a lot of my dad. I think, I don't think I ever purposely tried it. I just think it's in, you know, it's just my dad. It's like kind of in you that you just like, you just have something, uh, that he kind of has. Uh, as comedy, when I first started, it was, Se it was Seinfeld. If I thought of a joke, it'd be in that kind of rhythm. And then but when I started comedy is when it really happened. Because that's the that's the best part. Is the the reason I fell in, you fall in love with this thing is because you go like I just know Seinfeld. That's what I watched Cosby at the time. You know, like it was like the, all these big people were the only people that were allowed to, that I could that were clean. I could watch Sinbad. Sinbad was one of the first specials. At Frozen Bell Bottoms was the first special I was allowed to watch. It was clean. Uh, so it's like you could watch these things, and so you knew them. And then you think, well, that's that's basically the only comics I know is those. And then when you start, I remember my dad sent me Brian Regan's CD. Never heard. It. And so then I was like, oh. I mean, I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, you're like, how is this guy not the most famous person ever? Like, that's – it was so funny. Then you moved to New York. And it was, I saw uh, this guy, Kurt Metzger, Big J Okerson, was guys I kind of started with. And so like, they're so funny and they're just like been doing comedy two years longer than me. And something, so you're like, this is crazy. Then I saw Bill Burr. And Bill Burr is just doing clubs. It really Burr and Patrice, uh, Patrice O'Neill. Uh, they were, so I was in New York and you're seeing them. And these, they're, they're probably 10 years in doing comedy. No one knows them really, like we know them, but no one knows them. And you'd watch them and you're like, this is crazy, dude. Like, huh. and then you're seeing Ch Chappelle would also come in, but you know, everybody knew Chappelle. Uh, but Patrice and Burr and watching them just be like, Burr was really finding his voice. They had an HBO one night stand. Uh, they taped the same year together. And uh, so then both running that and being around that and just seeing. I mean, just like it's, I, I don't I, you know, Patrice probably would have been one with the best ever. Uh, he was just, it was, it was something just very, very different. And then, oh. uh, and then Burr and they would just murder. Like I remember watching Bill Burr at Caroline's. We go, he would headline, and you know, like half the room's full. And then the next year it was, they, Caroline's like, wouldn't let us come watch. Cause they, <laughs> we were like, you got all that. And they're like, that's too bad. Like it was like too crazy. <laughs> like wow. so we could go stand in the corner. And yeah. uh but like seeing that's the stuff that I would catch myself, mm. you know. Burr was a big one. People like Burr rocks on the mic stand. Mm. So it's like little stuff like that, where like you would see uh people just kind of sitting there, like kind of rocking on the mic stand, like him, you know, just yeah. in front David Tell, David Tell was kind of the king of New York, and uh he would be someone that you'd have to like catch yourself from watching too much. Mm, Cause you, you start do doing an, a version of it. Yeah. yeah. And, he, and that happened with, I have some videos. I sound like big J Ogerson, <laughs> like just the, the yeah. old video, just cause we're all together and totally. you're around too much. So you're all just kind of doing your uh, own thing. Funny the old YouTube video I have on this show, we're doing Hannibal is hosting the show. It was like, it was like that long ago. We're like, <laughs> Animal just got to New York and then uh he's hosting it's a midnight show. I mean it's yeah. it's uh That's crazy. Yeah, I was man, it's one of the best times of my life. I was addicted to Hannibal for a little bit there, man. Just because there was something about his ease, which you have too. I mean, as you know, you have an ease about the way that you do comedy that you rapid fire jokes. Similar to Seinfeld, and this isn't me trying to blow you up, this is being a student of comedy, right? Um, you feel like a student of comedy by the way that you pack your yeah. jokes in. And you do you joke you do jokes in rapid fire, in a rapid fire way that you have to laugh, kind of catch yourself, laugh again, and almost every single line can end up being a punchline, either based on your yeah. delivery or the way that you do it. I felt like kind of a burst was the same way. I grew up. My, which, what was your, what was your top all time? What would you say is the top comedy special ever for you? Same question oh. to you too. 
Well, the one that was formative for me that I could probably quote from beginning to end is Eddie Murphy Raw. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, I I couldn't see that in my house, of course. I saw it at my friend's house who had HBO. We obviously did not. We had basic cable. Uh, Your friends, your parents are like, I don't like you hanging out with them. (laughs) Yeah. That's right. Mine was delirious. Oh, Mine was getting married from delirious. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, that, that maybe has something to do with our time, too. Like, there was the yeah. only ones that were available, and they were secretive, and you couldn't, you had to seek them out. I just had never, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could talk like that. I didn't know you could tell stories like that. I I, I, I must have watched that 75 times, but. What's your what's your top one, Nate? Uh, I would say, I mean, I really remember, I want to say the first one was Afros and Bell Bottom. That's the one yeah, that so. I was, was the because I remember him talking about uh, going to McDonald's and uh, ordering off the menu. And so it was like watching something that was like, I go to McDonald's. Like, I, uh-huh. I, yeah. that's what I do, you know. Yeah. So it's it's this kind of TV that's just telling you about these things and so Sinbad was a very big one and then I read when I got in I read a book there's interviews with him and Sinbad and like so that was the first one I remember sitting with my parents and like we could watch uh and I would say Eddie Murphy I mean I'd never like I was a rule follower too like I didn't ever go search out stuff I wasn't supposed to watch uh but I watched Eddie Murphy and stuff later he's one that's like with Raw and Delirious is it's un it's it's so crazy that he wrote that at that age Mm. That's what's the craziest thing. Cause that's like an adult. That's like a, a like he should be 40. Mm. Yeah. He should be 20. And it's so wild. And when I did watch them and you're just like, this is crazy, dude. Like, and you, and you can think back of going like, all right, you think about the time that he is, how big he is and the stuff he's doing. I mean, you know, I mean, that's why he had to quit. <laughs> it's like, you just get so big. Steve Martin, they say, you're just like, what are you going to do? Like, you can't, yeah. you're just too big. Like, it's, it's when you go out, it's yeah. just, it's a party. It's not, it's hard to do comedy in that setting. Have you ever seen, there's clips of him at Comic Strip doing like the ice cream bit and all that on yeah. YouTube? It's pretty fun. Cause you, yeah. like, that's the stuff that you don't, as a comic, yeah. you're like, where'd you run this? Dude? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 exactly. Danny Murphy just feels like he just was like, I'm going to do a special. And they go, okay. And he goes, I'll yeah. do it right now. And yeah. then he's like, that's what it feels like because you yeah know, yeah he, yeah but you he know, workshop that yeah and yeah. It, it was uh and i remember talking to rock about it like being like would y'all go like in eddie like because eddie did have some you know doing some weird one-nighters and he mm-hmm. i mean he did all that stuff he was very young when he blew up but uh yeah very neat to see him do those those bits the ice cream bit all that stuff in such a smaller you know in a club setting like an east room yeah. setting where it's like this tiny thing. Yeah. And then all we really know it from is this big thing. Well, I want to ask you a question about you specifically in your comedy. Because you made a, I want to even say it was a bit that you wrote once. And the, the bit that you said, I remember hearing it and hearing the actual truth behind it. It was after at Yelled, by, Yelled At By a Clown. You did that material for quite some time. It started to blow up. And there, you know, then you had, um, your second big release, I think, was it 2019? Yeah. Oh, like, Netflix or Comedy Central? No, for your, your C, I'm talking about your CD release. Your, your. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, well, you know, it's funny. That's the hard part of that is, too, is actually with that beginning that yelled out by a clown is like, because you have this material. That's why your first, my first hour special is full time magic on Comedy Central. And I tell young comics that, too, like. I do have layover because you're like, dude, at that point, no one listened to Yell Out by a Clown. In the grand scheme of things, who am I to go like yeah, I, my the, the the Comedy Central special is my biggest shot at the moment. There might be, it's like Tyler and my parents that have listened to Yell Out by Clown. <laughs> I could just call both of them and be like, are y'all cool if I use some of this material? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's yeah. so it's like sometimes you think, well, I gotta get new stuff. You're like when you're at the beginning, it's like until you get like a uh, you know a big special, or or if you're out, if your album goes crazy, you know my album went more crazy after in the afterwards, uh, and so it's like you just kind of got to be like just put everything on, and that's why your first specials are usually the ones you remember the most, and like it's a very fun ones for you because you've had this material for ten years, like done forever. Uh, and you really get to work on it and all that stuff. And then you, and then after that is when you got to switch. And like, once I went to Netflix, 
was after the stand-ups, the 30 minute one, I remember the weekend after it came out, uh, I was at, I was in Tacoma, I think. And, uh, it's where I came over the dead horse story it happened this, this weekend. And I remember people came and then I started doing some of my jokes from the half hour, the stand-ups. And then I was like, and then I was like, wait, have y'all heard this? And they go, yeah, yeah, we're here because of you. And like, and it was like, I've never had that. You're like, oh, no. Like, you're like, <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, oh, damn. You're like, oh, people are here. Yeah. Like, they know who you are now. Yeah. It's not like you're just at a club and, you know, no one really knows. And so in that moment, you're like, oh, I have to come up with new material. Which becomes and, uh, a whole nother challenge in itself. And yeah. there are some comics who you are like, you find yourself going, do that one bit, Right. But then most comics that you, especially with the style that you have, we're leaning on the new material. Yeah. We're waiting to hear something new. You have some people that you're like, you know. Yeah, play do, the old hits. Play the old hits. Yeah. But I, I think especially with you, because you've you became popular, you've become popular during a time where we can just sit and watch your stuff on rotation. Right. We can just watch it over and over and over again. So when we go and see you live, we feel like we know you, you know it. Yeah. So you have this continual pressure to do new material. Yeah. How often now are you as a comic writing or partnering with other people? Or do you partner much to write with folks? No, I just do it myself. Love it's, it. uh, it's, I mean, I'll, like you talk, I have comics on the road and like, you know, I'll do my same set every night. We're talking about, you know, it's like, you know, like when you sit back at a club and you're just comics hanging out. Like you're, you can talk about like, Hey, I, I thought of this, is this funny? And like, yeah, that's funny. And then do this. But, uh, you know, it's hard to sometimes take jokes from people, like not take jokes, but like someone gives you an idea, like sometimes it can be very funny, but you're like, I can't, you just can't say it. Like, you're like, I don't know why it's just not in your voice. You know, sometimes you can, sometimes you get lucky and like someone gives you like a word, you're like, all right, I can fit that in. And sometimes you're like, dude, I wish I could, but I, I'm just, confidently I can't like I don't know it just doesn't fit right and I, I'm not going to get it out in the funny way uh but I mean now it's like when you come out it's like writing you got to write every day I mean yeah I, I don't ever sit down and write what do you do like, I think about it 24 hours a day yeah. so like it's in my mind and if I'm thinking on a joke what I've been doing this time around which I've found that like I uh I had the word old timey kind of stuck in my head. Hmm. And so I was thinking about like, I, I'm working on a, a joke and idea of just, just like old, like there's still a lot of, like we grew up yeah. in very still old timey ways. Like yeah, it was pre, sure. pre-internet, you grew up in very old timey ways to how my 11 year old daughter is going to grow up. So, and just, I, so, so, I, so I just think of that word a lot. Yeah. And then when you walk around, you're just thinking about just like kind of looking at stuff, just seeing if you see any, I don't know, stuff that fits into mm -hmm. what I'm talking about or like what. Right. You know, Something you can uh, pin to the board. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> and you kind of think of it piece by piece and you're like, oh, this little thing would work there. And I, that works there. And you, uh, you know, it's like, cause after this last hour, it's like, I'm kind of like, all right, I do got to figure a way to, you know, you kind of just go off like I'll just the panic of needing new material. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'll just do it. You're like, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're done with, you know, writing a book like you're just, it's just adrenaline. It's just it. they've paid me to do it already. I, 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 I have to do it. Have to do so, it. yeah, like no. sheer panic can actually be a good like producer for sure. And, um, your best friend. and I can tell you, no one knows how to do what they're doing. That's what I also, I think no one, anybody writes a book, anybody does it, yeah. like, podcast, no, 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 no. no it, it, it's, a, it's a sham. It, it's a it's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Um, so you're a hundred percent right. And, but it, it, I'm curious because now you're a big deal. And so where are you, where do you, where do you workshop your material now? Cause you got to try it out in front of people. Cause that's where you find the holes and that's where you find the missing pieces. And, um, the parts that don't work and the parts that do. So do you have this kind of low brow circuit you're still like hooking into to kind of practice and work it out and like fine tune your material? Uh, yeah. Like it's, 
uh, like when we did that Brad Paisley thing. I mean, that was a random thing, but that that was like great because yeah, I needed to be, like yeah, I needed. I was like, all right, I can go up, and I knew I could kind of do whatever I like time wise. Like not a ton. They had a lot of people on the show, but it was like I could do twenty minutes, and it wouldn't be a problem. Like you find little moments like that. Like I mean, I'm going this Thursday. I don't know when this comes out, but it's like two days from now. I'm gonna go. My buddy Justin Smith is doing uh, a show at Zany's, and I'm gonna go. And uh, so I'm gonna pop on that because I'm going to Australia Saturday, and like I and I've been a little off, so like I haven't had to really do comedy just here and there. So I'm like, I need to kind of get on stage and like just say these words again before I go to Australia. For I represent America, and, <laughs> over, and they're gonna be like, "This is the comedy y'all got," and you're like, "I'm sorry, everybody. It's much better than this." Uh, but it, you know, it's like so you just do stuff like that. Uh, I do want to go around some of the Nashville scenes. I've gone to the East Room because uh, that's the only one I really remember. But I know there's some other good rooms, and yeah. Danny's does a great new material night on Monday, so you can pop on there. But you have to be careful. It's like stuff that you can't really have your name out. Uh, because that, I mean, that's a whole new world. It's like, you just can't, you can't put your name out and on it. So you just kind of sneak on and pop in and just say, it. but I do a lot of it on the road too. I mean, I'm doing shows every weekend. So you're, you're constantly just like adding, you know, adding all this stuff in. Somewhere in the midst of that work, something you shift, happens. something happens yeah. from being just like, a guy who's doing work or a woman who's doing work and then suddenly you are just known. You are bigger than you thought you could imagine. You walk places and people go, there's yeah. Nate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's always like a slow, um, my career's always been kind of like a slower, like it have, it's all gradually going, which I'm really fortunate to work it that way i think it's much harder i always would say I've, i would always say you either make it at 20 or 40 and no one makes it in the middle and like you either, you either get lucky and like get grabbed right up or you have to go grind it out yeah and the growing out is the better way but i mean no one's gonna say no to you getting grabbed at 20 so that's what you hope but then you when you end up you're you are able to like I don't know, handle everything a little better just because you're older and you're you know how long you can appreciate it more because you set in all these times that you're nobody and uh, you're better at it. Frankly, I mean you are. All those oh. years are so useful. They they grow us up, so we're better by the time we're older. Of the flashy pants. One yeah. of the greatest things that it's the most important thing you could have. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but uh, yeah, like so you remember. I remember it's like getting ready. I remember one time we went to like an escape room with my family. Okay. And, and someone there asked to take a picture. And my sister was like, you want a picture of him? Yeah. That's what my sister would say. Yeah. 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 And like, it like makes it, and it's like yeah. funny when it makes it very, uncomfortable. then they're like, Oh, I thought, you know, they think everybody knows me. And then my yeah. sister's like, you know who he is. Yeah, You're totally. Hey, you know who he is. And then, totally. You'd have stuff like that or your friends or yeah. like uh, my friends, are, like a lot of times someone comes up to you in the street or somewhere and then they're like, do you know that guy? And yeah. you're like, I don't know that guy. I don't know. They <laughs> I, don't know. Like, I don't know. what to, I don't know everybody. My friends do that now just to be funny to me. They're yeah. like, you know that guy. And when I did Bridgestone, you're like, I don't know why. The, how, how are these people here? And more so, like I've been to, like you go to Canada and you're like, how do you know who I, I'm from? See, like what's that? How would you ever know be in this room that is me? And like, so, but I think it's a good thing because it makes you then go, I got to be I like, you're like, I got to impress these people, these people from another country, man. Like I have like, it's like, I got to do good. because I, I cannot, I, I don't understand. You know, you never really wrap your head around it. It's hard to wrap your head around it when you're in it. A fun thing for me that I've told you about before is that my 3 a.m. nighttime brain wants to wake up and think about, well, like health insurance premiums that are due and my children's future and the state of all of our cars and what I said that one time to that one person. But also a fun thing for me now is that 3 a.m. brain is no longer invited to the party because of one thing, focal CBD sleep gummies. They have changed my sleep game 
entirely. First of all, they work in that they have solved my middle of the night problems, but they're also yummy, like healthy sleep candy. I don't know what kind of magic makes them so effective because I'm not a scientist, but there's no weirdness in these. There's nothing bad. It's only good stuff only. Okay. So maybe you are a champion sleeper, if so, congratulations, and you just need a little focus during the day. Guess what? Focal has daytime gummies, too. So I've got a code for you. If you want to change your brain game, for the love is your code to get 20% off at focal.com. But really, sleep is priceless, so you can thank me later. So that's focal, F-O-C-L, dot com. And your code is for the love for 20% off. I have to ask you this. Your style, getting back to comedy, your style, Nate, and I hate you for it because Mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle can't even pull it off, although he's doing it, he's doing kind of a shtick. You are so damn funny, but your delivery is so straight as if none of this is humorous to you at all. It's my favorite. like, Like, it's just not funny to you at all. You're just saying the facts. Yeah. What ha- when are you laughing at you? Because you have to, right? You know, I don't know if I ever laugh, but I, I, I'll think like, man, that's funny. I talk about the jokes sometimes, like they're almost not like I had nothing to do with them. Like you'd be like, that was a good joke. They go, that. Like, I'll listen, like sometimes I'll be in Siri, like hear your old stuff on Sirius Radio, and then you're hearing an old joke, and I'm like, a ah, pretty good joke. I was like, and, but you're almost talking about it outside of, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like you really get your, you know, your head blows up because of it, but you just are like, it's a pretty solid joke though, you know? And so uh, you just do it, you do it that way. I, the only time I laugh on stage, like I'll laugh if I hear someone laughing. I do it occasionally. And then, uh, and it's, and it's, if I hear someone really, really laughing, uh, that can make you laugh because you can't like it's like really laughing. I kind of think of it like a movie like you know like it's when you watch a movie a comedy movie they're not laughing in it and so you you kind of it's like that kind of they're delivering it you know you need to deliver it with like the can you believe this is happening to me and like you want to be the kind of actor in the movie that's like you know and I always look at everything they can laugh at me or with me like it doesn't Either really way, matter. it's still a laugh it's still a laugh I've been that trying. person I'd have been the person that made you laugh if I was in the audience of your latest special when you do the bit about the firstborn versus the youngest. I yeah. could not even handle. I'm the oldest of four of Southern Baptists. Yeah. And the the whole bit is so hilarious. I could repeat it word for word. I'm like, I have five kids, which is irresponsible at best. And um, I just like my oldest son, what he got to do in the summer was go to free vacation Bible schools, as many as I could find. Um, And my youngest kid right this second, as we are speaking on this podcast, is on a four week travel summer camp through the Western United States. I'm like, she just got a different life. Real life is the best of all the material. It's what you said earlier, like when Sinbad's talking about McDonald's and you're yeah. like, I know about that. That is the thing that I know about. Yeah. Um, what do you want to talk about? Was like, is that re- re- relatability? Yeah, um, it is. You know, well, that, just, uh, that, that makes me, I want to ask you this because of that. So you've obviously got a daughter. She's 11. Is she 11? Just turned 11. Just yeah. turned 11. And you have a wife. So because they live with you in your home, that means they are a part of your material. Mm-hmm. And um, I am a writer, but also a speaker. And all the people that live with me in the past and currently are also a part of my material. And it's a tricky little line to walk when you yeah. are telling funny bits about their shenanigans. Yeah. Um, and so I'd love to hear how you work that out. Um, Cause we had to figure out some internal family rules especially as the kids got older and yeah. they're not interested in me talking about their like teen drama to yeah. thousands of people. Yeah. So how does this work for you? Do you get in trouble sometimes? It's, uh, you, you always got to show love. So the first, the, the, the first thing is like the love has to be shown people. I remember when I first started doing jokes on my wife, it, 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 I didn't know how to do that. And it would come off like, well, why are you married? And you're like, well, that's not, 
that's not what you're supposed to be taking from this. So you have, to, it was like, I love to like, you got to have a balance of like, I need to be the bad one as much as I can. If I want to have her be anything that is annoying, like there has to be some kind of balance. Uh, my daughter lately, I've been like trying not to like do too much. Like it's, if I do anything, it's kind of, uh, cause I, I remember I did, I, when I talked about her sleeping in the bed with us for a long time, it's like, she's old enough to then be like, you know, our friends, like you sleep in your parents' bed and like, then you're like, all right, like, you know, not, she does it now, but it's, 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 you know, you stuff stuff, you're like, all right, well, I don't want to put everything out. So you kind of like, I mean, I have a story now that I could, that's a great story, but I, I just can't tell it yet. Like it's, yeah. it's uh, I need her to be older and understand like why I would be telling it. Yeah. Uh, or like that are just the, how funny the situation of it is. And my daughter, our daughter's got a great sense of humor, but it's, you know, you don't want her, you don't want them to be the butt of every joke or That's anything. Right. So if I can be the, you know, the dumb one, like going to the, not knowing the bus, you know, she's on oh. or like, it's like, I, I, I can just be in this situation can be dealing with a kid. So I, now with that, I think a lot, I, I don't know if I go, I have a ton on her. Mm. her just because I'm trying to just lay off. She's 11. Yeah. It, uh, from what I've heard, girls, it gets it gets kind of wild. Yeah. Right about now, and You're all not wrong. The intel's correct. So, like, I yeah, I'm, I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know how it's going to go. So, I, I'm just kind of trying to, like, yeah. you know. Now, my wife, on the other hand, she's, you know, it's all, she, she has no choice. I tell she her. She married a comedian. Married a comedian. And yeah. luckily she has a, she does have a great sense of humor. And so she, uh, likes it. And like, you know, a lot of people come up to her and they're like, they relate. I always looked at it as like, I didn't really care who related to me. Like sometimes I will be the wife of a someone like a wife who will relate to me. Like my wife yeah. is the cheap one, which yeah. uh, a lot of times stereotypical, it, it like could be the husband's the cheaper one and the wife is the one that spends it. So it's like, it doesn't really matter who you're going to, you're just two people are going to relate to the relationship. My, you know, wife is the one mowing the yard. I didn't mow the yard. And like, so, and there, but it's fun when there's a lot of people that come up and like a lot of women that are like, yeah, yeah I do all the housework. I do. No. I do. I'm the one who built our shed in the back. Like <laughs> completely. Uh, all this kind of stuff. They like that. You know, it's like, they're just, that's the kind of person they're, 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 they're the handyman. And my yeah. wife is, she's the one that, you know, we have the tools. We have tools because of her. I don't, I, I've never touched these tools. I don't know yeah. why we have tools. Like, no, no. That bit's hilarious. The whole water heater bit. It's so funny. And also it kind of casts you as the dum-dum in a nice way. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. She kind of what, be the hero of that story. Yeah. That's what you want is like to, like, it's like, it is a lot of stuff. I want to uplift her and just be like, she's the one that's, you know, the only reason we're even this, we're in a house that's working and so it's <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like you yeah you just be like i would just have like i don't i don't know what i would have a studio apartment like it would be <laughs> what am i gonna have you don't you would, i'd have 50 you'd have to hire 30 people just to live here to work all right last question this is it um what because this it may be big and it may be small like i might think i know what you're gonna say but maybe i don't so far What's just the coolest thing that's happened to you? Like in your career specifically, where you just kind of go, I'm having such a moment right now that I'll just never be able to process this. Like this is, this is, this is unexpected and like incredible. Uh, the obvious one is Bridgestone. Bridgestone was the craziest. Cause that was when I, so I started uh, comedy, I would hand out flyers on the corner and I would dream of playing Bridgestone over anywhere else. I just thought about playing Bridgestone. And so to go from that moment to the, then it happening was, I mean, that's the craziest. That's one that's like, you know, I, I don't know if I've yet wrapped my head around it. And, uh, I heard an, uh, interview with Louis CK about like when he played the garden a bunch and like when he would play it, he would go down there and just do the garden and then take the train home. Like it was a normal kind of thing. And it never set with him until he went and watched another show there. And then, he was able to like, be like, I can't believe like I sold, you know, and sometimes you got to have an outside perspective. And, uh, so that one, I mean, it's still just hard to wrap your head around, uh, trying to think like any, uh, I got a call from Adam Sandler once 
Yeah, yeah. that's a weird. That's weird. And that was a weird. Normal. You know, I was as bad as going that we lived in a Hermitage, and uh, where I was picking my daughter up at uh, Primrose in Mount Julian. <laughs> five and i'm about to go in you know you're just like just doing your just picking up your daughter at school like and then i get a call and they're like is this nate and i'm like yeah and i'm like uh hold for adam sandler and you're like what and then he just called and just said like how much he liked my he just saw my special and all that stuff and i mean that was like a pretty yeah. that was like crazy because it's like then you hang up and you're like I then go inside and and go back to immediately go back to the most normal situation you could ever yeah, go to. Like getting a little pink backpack and that's it. Like People, I, grab the whole thing. I got a five year old that doesn't yeah. care that I talked to Adam saying unimpressed. Uh, unimpressed. Unimpressed. Yeah. Mean nothing to her. Yeah. And then, you know, and you're just sitting there like and the whole time you're walking in there, you're just like, I just talked to Adam Sandler. Totally. You know, there's no reason I would even understand. There's no context to it. No. No, oh, I'd, find so I'd find a way that's, to drop it. No, but I feel that in my bones yeah. where something crazy will happen and you have yeah. nobody around to care. Yeah. Or nobody like gets that moment. I, yeah. Just really quick about Bridgestone. I just want to say okay. before we go, man, listen, for those who are watching this or listening to this and don't understand when Nate talks about Bridgestone, I was just there. I saw Matchbox 20 at Bridgestone last yeah. week. I saw John Mayer at Bridgestone. We were talking about Justin yeah. Timberlake. Yeah. I've seen Jay-Z. Oh, yeah. Bridgestone is where the Predators play. Um, so my thought of even you going one day thinking about playing Bridgestone, I'm thinking you were shooting high, bro. Like, you weren't like the rhyming. Yeah. You were like, <laughs> yeah. I want to play in this major, major yeah. place. Um, you saying that that was something that was special, it was, yeah. man. Like... I remember the night I was out of town the night you played at Bridgestone, but my phone was blowing up with everybody going, Hey, we're going to go see Nate tonight. We're going to go see Nate tonight. You're one. They, they know who you are. It was hometown for you. And it wasn't odd for anybody else because you were exactly where it was. You were supposed to be, man. I like it. I like it. Yeah, we like you. We're big fans. It's so exciting. There's just some people that I just love to watch succeed. And I'm just so glad for the success. And just it couldn't happen to a nicer guy, a better guy. So I'm just we're excited. Keep going. Like we're waiting yeah. for the next special. I hope you're working it out. Yeah, trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah same to y'all. I mean, it's, it's cool. It's it's a uh, it's a it's a special thing. And uh it's good to, you know, yeah, good to talk to y'all. So, Thanks for being here, Nate. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, hey, great to see you. you, bro. All right. He's the best, you guys, the best. If you go to jinhatmaker.com under the podcast tab, I will have everything that you want to have about this episode and about Nate. I'll round up all the links for him to all of his specials, all of his everything, all of his socials. Um, if you are new to him, you're going to want to start and just power through. That's going to be your day. Um, and then I'll have this episode link if you want to share with friends. So I told you we were best friends. I just <laughs> want to go back now. That there's proof. There's solidified proof. That's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, you guys, that is the way to kick off the funny series. We have so many more incredible guests to come. You're going to love this entire series. If you haven't already subscribed, do it. And then you'll never miss an episode. It just shows up like magic, like right in your AirPods. So um, I love this one and I love next week's too. So thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. We love you guys. See you next week.